Hi, this is your host, Sapnil Bhartiya, and we are here at KubeCon and Cloudery Con in London. And today we have with us Pini Resnick, founder and CEO of Racing. Pini, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for inviting me. It's my pleasure. I would start with, tell us, you are the founder of the company. What is the uh, Racing all about? And also the name is, has some, you know, interesting, uh, the way you spell it out. So talk about the story of the company. So we started about a year and a bit ago, and um, before I think we built a cloud native consultancy, quite successful one. And once we finished and sold it to private equity, we, we thought, what's the next big thing? What, how can we help actually implement the same expertise in the world, help people to use the cloud native technologies, but also do something good for the world? So the direction we have chosen in the beginning was sustainability. So reducing carbon emissions in IT and other industries. And we built some open source projects and some tools. Um, but unfortunately, most businesses are not ready to invest meaningfully in sustainability. So over time, we moved into what we call now AI native. Uh, we're not the only ones saying it, but basically we're now focusing on building AI native platform, embedding AI in uh, development processes, and generally helping businesses to get the maximum out of that. And, and the name, yeah, it's, uh, it spells like French sunk, which is five. And the idea was originally that there were five founders. Unfortunately, uh, two of them didn't join at the end because they had better things to do, but the name sticks. And, uh, and we have a, a green leaf in the logo with the software sign, which to suggest that we are a sustainability business. We are here at KubeCon and of course, Kubernetes, uh, it used to be, I mean, still shiny object people talk about, but I think the shiniest thing is AI these days, you know? Yes. So can you talk about what is your approach for AI? How do you look at Gen AI, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and all those nuances? I think this this is, I think, very important topic, which last year, I, I didn't realize how, uh, how meaningful the change of AI is on our lives. And, uh, and I think a lot of people still don't fully understand what AI means. And by saying AI native, we want to say the same as cloud native. It's the software that is built to natively run with AI or use AI. And, uh, and it's not some extra addition, but it's actually embedded and, and it's built specifically for that. And what does it actually mean? So there is, uh, first there is AI platforms, which are not that different from cloud native platforms. These are the large scale, secure and everything else. That's where you run your um, uh, trainings and inference and other things. And then there is development processes that are using AI. We all know Copilot, which is quite a common tool and, uh, and all kind of other tools to, to help you to write better code or tests and other things. And then there is uh, AI to be used in a business. So the business that wants to reduce overhead of uh, basically waste and help people to focus on the things that they are good at. And uh, I think there is quite significant misunderstanding about AI, where the people think that it's sort of magic bullet of Gen AI that you put in a question and you get the solution. What really is likely to happen is more augmentation of human work. So reducing 90% of the, of, of the tasks that are toil, that are not very meaningful. Like if we work with financial team, if they, uh, they spend 90% of their time digging in Excel sheets to find some number, and um, instead there's 10% 10, 10 of meaningful work and the rest can be offloaded to AI. So, uh, sorry, to AI. Um, so that's basically, uh, we strongly feel that AI is going to change the world, but in step-by-step -step matter and as augmentation of humans. So where humans will express the intent, oversee the ethics, and make sure that what they intended to actually do is happening and that quick experimentation can be uh, done very easily with AI, but still the humans are those who uh, invent new things. And sometimes what we see is that every time new shiny object, new tiny, a lot of folks want to get on that bandwagon. Why? Because everyone else is here. But they may not, first of all, be right use case for that, or they are not getting the most out of that technology. Do you feel that companies, organizations 
are not able to achieve, you know, the the full value, real value of cloud native technology. If yes, why? I actually absolutely think that companies don't even achieve the full value of cloud native technologies yet. Yet, I still think that even in cloud native world, the transformation didn't finish because a lot of companies get to the state that is good enough when they have Kubernetes, they have microservices, but their delivery cycle is still six weeks. Right? This is, doesn't sound like cloud native. And I think very similar thing is going to happen with AI. Because we are humans, we adopt new technologies a certain way. And there is the right way to adopt techno new technologies, which is start small with a small team, develop the minimum viable product that is actually doing the thing that you need it to do, and then scale it to few teams, and then few more, and few more, and then gradually expand across the organization, and then bring it to a level of maturity when everything is absolutely perfect. But that's not how many enterprises are doing it. So what often they do, they will pour a lot of money in it to overwhelm the system and bring too many developers, too many tools, buy this kind of, uh, like you're saying, a solution, a product that in their mind will just solve the problem altogether. And uh, I think we need to take a step back to take it more slowly, like uh, in this recent book from uh, um, Jim Kim, that he uses the term slow slowification. Slow down, think, plan, and implement it step by step, by step from small to, to full scale. And I think this is something that AI or cloud native or any previous big technology, there's just only one way to implement it correctly. And do you feel that, you know, AI, of course, uh, before you, I had a discussion with Kelsey also, and like just a lot of folks, they look at AI as a hammer, you know, and everything looks like a nail. Yeah. But in some cases, we are also talking about the woodworking analogy. I do use a lot of things yeah. to simplify my job as a woodworker, yeah. but I look that as a tool. Yeah. So when it comes to getting the full potential of cloud native technologies, do you think AI can help? Or how do you see Resync can help or is trying to help folks get the full potential of cloud native technologies? Yeah, so I think AI can definitely help to improve. It's just important to do it in the right way. We need to understand the benefits of AI, but also the limitations of AI. And the limitations of AI is that it's unlikely to be able to invent new things in any foreseeable future. Right? So it basically reshuffles the existing things and presents them in different ways. Now, it's, it's good to think of AI. It's easy to think of AI as Gen AI, as ChatGPT and Gemini and Drogos. But um, this is just a simple way of doing things. This is just about writing or, or relatively simple problems where we use the existing data to, to help us to, to just go faster. I think um, it's important to understand that AI is, uh, uh, is not going to invent things, but it's going to speed up our world. In the way like uh, industrial revolution switch the muscle power to engines. Now AI is shifting the, the manual brain work to automated work. And uh, we as we think, we definitely can help to apply those technologies in a way that is much more, um, say, has a higher chance of success on scale to bring actual business value and uh, not just use another technology because you can. Right. This is, you have to get to the business value. You have to get to the business case. And then um, um, we can help you to do it in the right way, I guess. How do you see AI? I do know a lot of people say that if you are using AI to get your job done, your job is never at risk. But if you're competing with AI, your job is at risk. So how do you see AI? Is it going to, what impact it will have on job market and, and i think everything people say right now is guesses right because we we have this uh, sort of the immediate thing that we can guess and that's what we assume that is going to happen but there's a lot of uncertainty and i i don't think it will end up being the way i don't think people uh predicted supply chains when the engine was invented for example so in a sense i think um 
on the short term, AI will reduce the human interaction because we solve the most difficult problems by talking to each other. And now we're talking to ChatGPT. <laughs> Now, this, this is reducing human interaction. But on the other side, longer term, it will free up a lot of our time. Right? It will allow us to do things. It actually potentially can bring us to the point that we can create more than we need. For example, solve world hunger. By the way, the wor world hunger doesn't exist because we don't have enough food, but because we don't distribute it correctly or because we have political issues. Right? So I think AI will allow us to create more and it will allow us potentially to be more with our families but will we use this time or, or not i don't think it's up to ai or technology i think it's up to us i do think that in foreseeable future tens of a few decades uh, uh, forward we will likely have way too many things and way more than we actually need to survive, grow, and expand. What are we going to do with that time? I, I, I can't predict that. If we just forget about you know, the impact of AI in the world, let's just focus on businesses. Yeah. How should business leaders, CEOs, C-level executive management, how should they look at AI? Where, of course, uh, there are a lot of jobs which was just grinding, number crunching, but then, there are a lot of jobs where your experience, and I'm not, I mean, like, as I was talking to Kelsey before that, you know, while you're training LLM, we are always in training. When I'm talking to you, I'm in the training mode. I'm learning so many things from you. And that's why I love this job of being a journalist. I learned so much throughout the day. I'm always in training mode. I may not produce, uh, you cannot prompt me to produce something, but I can. How should business leaders look at AI? to maximize their value at the same time look without humans i mean you cannot have machines for the sake of machines you know yeah. so so how do you how they should look at ai so this i actually have a really good answer for this just from last few months talking to multiple people i, I think again going back to what people expect from ai and and i heard things like we have a large call center, let's go buy an AI platform to do chatbot and then fire half of the call center. Right? Or let's buy a tool that will do all the data, the data crunching and we will just you know, fire half of our financial department. I think this is uh, both wrong way of viewing AI, viewing AI but also it's a, uh, um, it's not an ethical way of viewing AI. I think the direction I would like to see, and I really hope this is where it's going to, to go, is that we're not going to fire call center people, but we are going to create quite complex systems that will pull the data, will operate with different external systems, will create interesting and complex solutions, and will empower those in the call center to do much better job. The same way as um, uh, agriculture, 500 years ago in agriculture, 90% were working hard to feed 100% of the people. And today it's 2% that feeding 100% of the people. So AI should, should be used to empower people to do better job, not to replace them. Right, so, and that's the direction I would like to see, but it will require from those people to change too. So because AI is still a machine. And machinery is, uh, is going to give you exactly the answer that you're going to ask. Right? So if you're asking the wrong question, you're going to get the wrong answer. So what we will need to do is instead of replacing those people in call centers with AI, we need, we're going to, to create AI that will empower them and we will train them to be, become effectively prompt engineers that will still talk to people. Because if you are in a bank or insurance or... Uh, uh, a leasing company in the call center and people are calling you and let's say it's a 90 years old person who cannot scan a barcode do you really think that they want to talk to AI chatbots yeah I think they really want to talk to the person no so I too now while what you're sharing is 
how they should approach it, what should be the right way of doing things. But sometimes, while ideas are good, sometimes a lot of folk, they just want turnkey solutions. Did you build Resync to actually solve the problem? And if yes, just, just share that approach where you can make things easy for them. Absolutely. And this is the same as the previous company. I, I even wrote a book called Cloud Native Transformation uh, for O'Reilly. That was all about not just adopting Kubernetes as a tool, but actually doing it the right, in the right way, starting small and growing. And now I'm working on the next book. Um, there is no title yet, but sort of about AI native transformation. What is the right way to adopt AI? How you need to adapt new technologies and what will be the impact on, of those technologies on the people in your organization? So for us, it's not only about the tools. There's plenty of other companies that are going to build, build amazing tools. We really want to help people to adapt it in the right way, to solve the right human problems, and to use the right process that will help them to achieve the maximum value. So, uh, yeah, the book will be hopefully very helpful and instructive for, for the readers, but it is also based for our services to the customers. We don't just install tools and implement AI but we actually help to solve business problems. Before that, I would also like to know what are the things in the pipeline of Resync? What are the things that you folks are working on that we can expect this year? We basically now focusing on three types of projects. The first type is uh, AI native platforms. It's basically the same thing we have done in the past, which is massive scale platforms for large enterprises. We have really large enterprises and customers. Uh, it is all about scale and consistency. It's, it's the same thing as, uh, as we are doing for many years. The second pro, uh, part is implementing AI in development processes, which is coding assistance, testing, uh, observability, and, and other uh, AI applications within development process. And the third part, which is relatively new, new for us, is actually working directly with the business to implement AI without actually a development team. Right? Because uh, we spoke to this uh, uh, CFO of, uh, of a company in Denmark. He said that his financial team spends 90% of their time digging in Excel sheets to figure out some numbers. So he doesn't want to build a software development team. What he wants is to solve that problem. And AI is actually very useful for this. And, um, uh, and that's the third part. So the AI native platforms, AI native software development, and AI native for solving business problems. Pini, thank you so much for joining me today. And of course, share your great insights about you know, sustainability and how we should approach AI, AI native, and how organizations should get more benefit out of their investment in cloud native technologies. Uh, thanks for those great insights. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show thank you it was my pleasure and uh, and uh, hope to yeah hope the social brings a lot of new ideas and uh, a lot of new tools uh, to the world and uh, it's uh, it, it's a great place to be